Guess what, guys? Today we're back with another episode of things nobody asked me to explain, but I'm doing it anyway. And today we'll be diving into Gyroflow, that magical software that takes your shaky DJI Avata footage and turns it into something smooth and less horrible to watch. But mainly we'll be talking about the export settings and how to properly do it for Instagram and TikTok because apparently that's the world we live in right now. So let's dive right into it. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is open a Gyroflow and import our footage. Make sure your clip was recorded in wide angle with all built-in stabilization off because that's how Gyroflow reads the motion data and works its magic. If you shot your footage with stabilization already on or ultra wide angle for example, unfortunately it's not gonna work. Now, once the footage is imported, the very first thing I like to do is mark the section I'm actually going to need. The last thing I wanna do is stabilize 5 minutes of wobbly sky for no reason, which will take ages to export later. Then we head over and change the resolution and aspect ratio directly inside Gyroflow. And this part is super important. Even though we all know Instagram and TikTok don't support 4K, we're still going to export it in the highest possible resolution and 9 by 16 aspect ratio since we need to export it for a second time again later in CapCut or whatever software you're using. That's why it's essential to crop and export using those exact settings in here which means you'll preserve way more detail and quality from the original clip for later. Now smoothness. I know it's tempting to crank this thing all the way up and make your video look extra floaty but don't. Anything over 30% usually eats into your resolution because gyroflow starts cropping in to stabilize more aggressively and you're losing pixels. So my sweet spot for this clip will be around 26%, smooth enough to look cinematic but still crisp. Now there is also this option to lock the horizon, so if you're doing some slow cinematic drone shots that might be your thing, but for FPV, no. I want that dynamic tilt, the one that makes you dizzy but in a good way. Dynamic zooming, zoom limit 120%, zooming speed 3 seconds and less correction 200%. Now if you click advanced right below, you'll see the field of view slider. And this is the secret that nobody teaches you. The deal is, the higher your field of view is, the more the image you can fit into your vertical frame. But there is a catch of course, push it too far and you'll start seeing black bars at the top and bottom. So the goal is to find that sweet spot wide enough to look fast and immersive but not so wide that your footage looks like it's falling apart. Plus, higher field of view makes the flight look faster and dynamic while more crop makes it slower and, well, kind of sad. So choose your sweet spot and don't worry about the black lines for now. We'll clean them up later in post so we can get the best of both worlds. You can also fine tune your shot here in the 3D rotation section Adjusting the pitch, yaw and roll if your framing is a bit off for example. Moving the center more to the left or to the right, just like that, you get the point. But mine looks good to me the way it is, so I'll just leave this section untouched. And now we can move on to the export settings. Everything here is already pre-selected, so I'm just gonna show you what's there and not really gonna change anything. Make sure you export it in 4K, just like we discussed earlier and then we can just hit export and this will take about a minute or so and just like in my previous video i still don't know how to cut or speed this up so i'll just use the time and tell you another story from my childhood when i was a kid back in the 90s there was this one summer where i became absolutely obsessed with building my own drone and by drone i mean two plastic fans taped to a shoe box and honestly i was convinced it would fly I even drew a NASA logo on it with a marker just to make it official. Anyway, one afternoon I climbed up onto the garage roof, the shoebox drawn in my hand with my friend watching from below like it was some historical moment and I remember counting down 3, 2, 1 and then I threw it as hard as I could. Oh, wait, the export is done, so I'll just get back to this and finish the story some other time. Now let's quickly review what we've done so far and we're going to export the clip into CapCut for the final editing in a minute. As you can see the clip is turning pretty good and now let's just import it to CapCut for the final touch where we'll clean up the black lines in a way that nobody will notice. 
And the first thing we're gonna do now is rewatch the clip carefully and find the exact moment where the black lines are showing the most. And this is where we're gonna do the cropping. While we're here, we have to make sure that we crop them out of the frame completely. And we can even review here the entire clip to see if they're showing anywhere. So we can adjust the cropping even more. And now let's rewatch one last time to see if we missed anything. And I think there is no need of any more cropping, so we can now safely head over to the canvas section. Here we select blur and choose the first one. And what we basically did here is replace the black canvas behind with a real-time blur reflection of the actual clip. But as you can see, it's not perfect at all. There is an obvious line that stands out, which requires some fixing. And this is where the feathering effect comes in handy. Now we're gonna head over to the masking tab. And here we see a few different masking layouts. I will show you two different examples that you can choose between, as I find both very useful for different situations. Starting with the square, on the sides you can just stretch it out, out of the frame, since there is nothing to blur there, and focus on the top and bottom. Try to align it as close to the lines as you can and add the necessary strength from the slider. Just like so. Or maybe that was a bit too much because we can see the line is showing again. We can either decrease the strength like this or adjust the size of the mask itself to go above the line and make sure it covers it completely. There's just so many different ways to play around with masking and feathering so do your thing, you get the idea. Now this already looks good to me, but the only problem is that the top is not really perfect and it's still a little bit noticeable. So to fix this, we can use the second method by adjusting the position of the main frame and aligning it with the top edge. And now we're going to use the linear mask to blur out only the bottom since now the top also doesn't require any more blurring. We can increase the feathering here even more for smoother transition and review again. Oops, that's not good at all. I guess I pushed it too far and now the entire line is showing again. So let's play around a little more until we get it right. And I think that's what we're aiming for, more or less. It's still a bit noticeable now, but keep in mind when we post it on social media, that's exactly where the description, your profile picture and so on will be. So it's not going to be visible at all. I can actually even show you an example of what will the clip look like once posted. Here's how it will appear on TikTok. You have the description and your name above the blur. On the side you have the likes, comments, saves and shares. And even at the top you have some things which will cover the blur there as well if we decided to go for the first option for example. It's the same for YouTube Shorts and Instagram. You can see it's already way less noticeable like this. And when you add a little bit of color grading and glow, it will almost completely disappear. I actually have another video on my channel where I'm sharing my color grading process step by step. And if you're interested to see that too, I'll just leave a link into the description. And before we end this video, I will now show you my export settings here on CapCut 2, which are pretty straightforward. Now that we have the video ready, we're going to hit export at the top right corner of the screen. We're going to give our project a name. Here you can change the export destination. For resolution, we're going to choose 180p, bitrate always the highest, and the codec H264. We'll leave the format in MP4 and match the frame rate with the one from the original clip. In my case, it's 60. If you have the option for optical flow, Always keep that on for nicer and smoother playback and that's pretty much it. We're gonna hit export now and here's our final video in nice and crispy quality with the speed and dynamic still there as if it was shot on the GoPro. Thanks for watching guys and again if you want to see my color grading process you can click on this next video.